In the name of the Father, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for your mercies, which are new every morning. You are a loving God. You are a loving Father. Everything that we are experiencing, this breath of life, every resource, every providence is your gift. For your word says, every good thing is from above in the book of James. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in our midst. Take complete authority of this session. Lead us into more and more revelations which are hidden in your word because there's no better teacher than you. Take complete authority of this entire session. Take complete authority of my mind and my vocal cords. You think through my mind, you speak through my mouth. Let every word that is spoken over here pierce the hearts of those who are listening. And I bind every spirit of distraction, disturbance, and unbelief that has come to steal, kill, and destroy. In the name of Jesus, I command you leave this place right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for I know and I know that you are going to confirm every word spoken over here with accompanying signs, wonders, and testimonies. We make this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Praise God, sister. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Praise God. So, now we will learn on the parable of the prodigal son. Yesterday, we studied about the younger son. Now we will study about the older son. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, before we go there, we'll do some revision. Okay. So in Luke chapter 15, verse 1, we saw that the, the Pharisees were grumbling. They were complaining that Jesus is going and he's going and, you know, uh, spending time with the sinners. He's eating with them and all those things. And that's why Jesus told those three parables. Okay. So this parable is mainly hinted towards the Pharisees. Thank you, Jesus. And now we also learned, okay, that the father divided the property between the elder son as well as the younger son. It was the younger son who demanded the property, but the father divided it between both. Thank you, Jesus. And yesterday we had reached to this part where the younger son realizes his mistake. Okay. And as he realizes his mistake, he comes back. And when he comes back, the father receives him with love. And what happens after that? He also kills a fattened calf. And the whole house is rejoicing, is feasting. And this fattened calf is a representation of Jesus. Praise God. Now you might think, looking at this, that the father, you know, killed the fattened calf only for the younger son and not the older son. That's what I used to think many a times. But Holy Spirit revealed to me that that was not the case. So let's read, okay, from here. Can someone please read? But his older son was in the field, and as he returned and came near the house, he heard music and dancing, and having called one of the servant boys to him, he began to ask, what this meant. Praise Jesus. Okay. But his older son was in the field. And as he returned and came near the house, he heard music and dancing. That is the older son. He was managing 
the father's business okay and he was coming back after he finished the work so he heard music and dancing and having called one of the servant boys to him he began to ask what this meant he was like what is this happening music and all those things now let's see what the servant boy said anybody would like to read and he said to him your brother has come and your father has killed that wheat fattened calf because he has received him back safe and well but the elder brother was angry and with deep seated wrath and resolved not to go in then his father came out and began to plead with him praise god thank you jesus and he said to him that is the servant said to the elder brother your brother has come and your father has killed that wheat fattened calf because he has received him back safe and well okay so when the servant gives that news about all that is happening how the younger son came back and still you know the father did all these things the elder brother okay he got angry now tell me something okay those of you who have siblings okay say your siblings um, they are doing some uh, you know they they were lost they were not there at home and they returned after many years what should be the natural feeling you should be happy right yes yes any, any older brother you know would normally be happy you would be like okay you know my brother he i have not seen him for years and now today finally he has come let me welcome him correct yes but this person this person what he did he was angry with deep seated wrath and he resolved not to go in and why do you think he was angry because he was bitter he was irritated okay and let's see what happens and in the beginning of the class i said okay that the father uh, you know killed the fattened calf but it was not just for the younger son but it was also for the older son correct the father came out and began to plead with him he came out and he called him we are feasting even you come and even you enjoy the fattened calf but he was not ready to come now let's read further just one minute yes there is a deep seated wrath bitterness deep seated wrath means he was angry and like thank you jesus wait okay i'll explain to you more on this so when i say deep seated wrath means he was extremely angry now why was he angry bitterness is my negative reaction to somebody's wrong that is what is bitterness actually the what is the reason for him to get angry actually it's a reason to celebrate bro but when he is seeing that okay my brother he wasted in his focus it's not that my brother returned back he is focusing on my brother returned back but he returned back with all the anger like i mean he returned back wasting everything his focus was not on his brother returning his focus was on how bad life he lived how good life i am living so he was very self righteous so from that self righteousness the devil was deceiving the older brother and that's why he was angry sister did this answer your question yes sister praise god uh, thank you ah uh, okay yes sister anybody wanted to ask something okay we'll continue 
Now, when the father came out and began to plead with the elder brother to come, okay, to come and to um, this thing, enjoy the meal, the feast. Now, what he says, okay, can someone read this? But he answered his father, "Look, this many years I have served you." and i have never disobeyed your command yet you gave me so much never gave me <laughs> I, yet you never gave me so much as a little kid that i might revel and feast and be happy and make merry with my friends praise god but he answered his father that means the old of son answered his father when the father was pleading for him to come and enjoy the feast he's saying look these many years i have served you he's saying these many years i have served you and i have never disobeyed your command yet you never gave me so much as a little kid that i might revel and feast and be happy and make merry with my friends okay thank you jesus so now if you look at this okay somebody's mic is uh, making noise kindly mute it thank you jesus okay if you look at this it says these many years i have served you i have served you the property is whose the fathers the inheritance everything the father has worked hard but the son he's received it as an inheritance but in his mind he considers himself as a servant now what is the difference between the servant and a son thank you jesus can anybody tell me what is the servant difference is between a paid, uh, paid person yeah Works. servant is a paid person correct whereas son gets an inheritance no. servant receives a salary correct for the month you get a salary but the son gets inheritance now did the son work for it that inheritance no, no. not at all correct he did not work for it but he is getting it free from his father as a gift but what is this boy saying this elder brother these many years i have served you and i have never disobeyed your command okay yet you never gave me so much as a little kid that i might reveal and feast and be happy and make merry with my friends so he's saying even though i have served you you never gave me you didn't give me a small kid kid is the young one of a goat okay you didn't give me that that i may revel and fast feast but the truth is the father had divided the property he had given everything to the between the younger son and the older son and what is this person saying you never gave me anything because whatever belonged to the father was his right so was his understanding right or was it wrong 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 right thank you jesus praise god thank you jesus so because his understanding was wrong that's why he was considering himself a servant when in reality he was the son that is what happens between a person of law and grace okay a person who understands grace has no trouble receiving freely from god because he knows that it is not mine it is my father's i don't deserve it the younger son's attitude was whatever i have done i don't deserve this thing i deserve to be a servant but i'll go to my father's house and i will repent and when he repented he experienced the grace what all he got was the bonus the grace the inheritance because of the father's love that's exactly what god wants for you and me the grace 
to experience his goodness in every area of our life okay but this older son he was under performance mindset he was on law mindset all the time performing performing and that's why from what he's saying to the father it is very very um, evident correct it is very evident that these many years i have served you so he is expecting the father to reward him for his performance i all able to understand yes. thank you jesus yes, yes, thank so you so these many years i have served you and he's saying i have never disobeyed your command now when he's saying i have never disobeyed your command okay he is more focused on the outside his outside action might be correct he might have not done the things what the younger son has done but is his heart condition right no 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 Where clearly exactly correct his heart condition was not right because when his brother came back he was full of bitterness he was full of jealousy and that is demonic that's what james chapter 13 3 verse 13 says where there is selfish ambition and strife there is every kind of evil work there is disorder and every evil work so because of that that offense that strife that bitterness that's why he could not be happy he could not rejoice that his brother had come back and he's saying i never disobeyed your command he's more focused on the outside now if we remember that jesus was telling this to the pharisees okay the pharisees uh, they were like this they were trying to keep the law on the outside but their hearts were very far away from god there was no love there was no compassion thank you jesus and that's why jesus you know had to come for everyone jesus came even for the pharisees jesus even came for the sinners everybody he loved he just wanted them to believe in his sacrifice because according to the law a person like you know there is no single person who can be justified by the law all have sinned all deserve punishment because of the sin nature praise god thank you jesus praise god thank you jesus so, sister can yes, i say sister. something if you yes, don't yes. mind yes See, yes you uh, uh, this is my feeling you are saying i have never disobeyed your command that is what you you feel that it is the pharisee you, you are representing the pharisee as the elder son but i feel a person who never disobeys god's command is is neither a pharisee nor a prodigal son he could be another faithful servant another faithful son and some i i feel connected to this elder son and uh, what i want to say is that obedience is better than sacrifice that is what the lord says and uh, i have been through this process sister frankly speaking i have always felt this that when I, i used to always be desperate to hear the lord's voice that was my only thing that i wanted i wanted his friendship i wanted him to speak to me as he would speak to my to the people around me that was the only thing i wanted and as as a prodigal son many of my people around me they heard the voice of the lord and i started very late hearing the voice of the lord for which also i had to do certain things to obey him make myself pleasing in such a way that he would speak to me and today he speaks to me no doubt he speaks to me his friendship is there with me but i had to wait for a really long time and i used to feel connected to this parable i don't okay. know how to express but sister sister i understood what you're saying and this i'm not this is not my interpretation okay this is what the scripture says 
I will show you in the scripture which says that nobody can be justified by the law. Whoever tries to perform is under a curse. Do you want me to show you in the scripture? Because what the word says is the final thing. Because my opinion can be an error. But the word of God can never be an error. Do you agree with me, sister? Yes, sister. Praise God. We all are learning. And it's good that you brought this out. So that because of you, so many others will also get the answer. Okay? Wait, I'll just put that scripture. Yesterday only I was reading on this. Yeah. Okay. Wait, I'll just put this. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Which is Sister script? Cressy, right? Which is yes, Sister. Yeah, I want you to read this. Yeah. Scripture, please. And all who depend on the law, who are seeking to be justified by obedience to the law of rituals, are under a curse and doomed to disappointment and destruction. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed, a curse devoted to destruction, doomed to eternal punishment, the everyone who does not continue to abide, live and remain by all the precepts and commands written in the book of the law and to practice them. But that is rituals. This is rituals, no. law of rituals. No, no, I'll come to that. I'll come to that. See, this is not completed yet. For those of you who want to know which scripture this is, it is Galatians 3. Okay? Okay. Fine. So, when they are saying law, okay, the law speaks about the 613 laws, which were reduced into the 10 commandments of Moses. Correct? So, it's saying that whoever tries to earn salvation based on their performance, saying that, Lord, because I am doing, because I am uh, keeping the law, because I am obedient, that's why I deserve to hear your voice. That person is under a curse. I'm not saying it. It is the scripture that is saying. When they meant rituals, it is not speaking about the rituals. It's talking about the law, 613 laws. In the Olden Covenant, the Pharisees misunderstood. They were trying to keep on the outside, their actions were correct. But inside, their heart condition was not right. Okay, And according to 1 Samuel 16 verse 7, man looks at the outward action, but God looks at the heart. Because what is the scripture saying? That whoever tries to depend on the law is under a curse. Because it is written that cursed is be everyone who does not continue to abide, live and remain by all the precepts. Okay, so the standard of the law is, okay, this, this is a place where Paul was preaching to the Galatians and he was extremely angry. You know, this whole letter, if you see chapter three, it starts with you foolish Galatians. He says that, you know why? Because he had gone and preached the gospel in the church in Galatia. They had accepted the gospel. They received it by faith. But then later on, some people who were mixing, you know, law and grace, they came and they preached. They came and preached another gospel, which is not a gospel. It is speaking about keeping the law. Now, Paul was angry that they got set free after hearing the gospel. And now again, they are going back into that same bondage. And in those days, okay, circumcision was a, a thing. Okay, it was a, um, is, it was a part of the law. So circumcision came into existence when Abraham and uh, Jesus, sorry, God made a covenant with Abraham saying that, you know, Israel is the chosen generation. And that's why on the eighth day, the new male born child would be circumcised. And they used to take this ritual very, very seriously. Okay. But after Paul went and preached, okay, 
he got the revelation the understanding of the scriptures through the holy spirit all these things didn't matter okay because salvation came from the jews it because jesus came from that lineage but it was open even to the gentiles but the jews were demanding that if they want to be accepted they have to follow the rituals that we are following so that confusion came after paul started preaching over there and he saw that now these people who started off with the spirit they are again going and trying to please god with the law it happened with me also sister after i got born again by faith i was spending a lot of time in the word of god okay but slow cannot hear you sister hello sister you are muted no somebody called me thank you jesus okay one minute praise god thank you jesus all right so where i was i was speaking about the book of galatians right can someone please remind me what i was saying thank you holy spirit anybody you you were talking about the pharisees that they were not keeping the they were they were only observing the law for the yeah, heart yeah. correct correct okay so they were only um, observing the law and that is why i i was talking about myself thank you jesus so when i uh, you know i started off with faith okay but then after i started in faith then i started saying that okay i'm not doing enough i need to get up at 5 o'clock i need to do this i need to do that like you know like nobody told me but that desire came i want to please god and you know because when i used to sit in the presence of god i would feel the anointing i would feel like an electric current passing through me and all those things that presence of god was so beautiful so powerful so strong in my life and because of that what happened i i was wanting for more so i realized if i have to please god what had to happen i have to do more i have to do more and i started getting into a performance mindset and what happened i wanted to get up at 5 o'clock and if i would get up at 6 o'clock i would get upset with myself have you experienced that sister cressy sister i have gone beyond that i used mm. to obey the gospel like for mm. example speaking the truth whatever jesus said forgive mm. your neighbors whatever he gave laws of the life i should not get up in the morning no i used to not do anything but i used to literally follow what jesus is to say and be- because of that i used to go through a lot of depression also because yeah. there was an attack of the devil so much attack of the devil in my life that i used to feel like under the others are having a big grass is greener on the other side but still i used to walk in 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 the in the teachings of jesus like you know that was what i used to do it was very difficult and everybody knew me as a good girl like innocent girl until today they they do that but then i used to always feel like others are more blessed than me okay because they used to hear the voice of god yeah yeah i'm telling you no see uh, that's what the scripture says okay it is okay now i want you to read this part okay 11 onwards now it is evident that no person is justified declared righteous and brought into right standing with god through the law for the scripture says the man in right standing with god the just the righteous shall live by and out of faith and he who through and by faith is declared righteous and in right standing with god shall live okay praise god so why it is saying that is if you are saying that i want to justify myself with the law the law is very strict okay in james chapter 2 verse 10 i will show you that scripture okay it says that whoever offends in one law is as good as breaking all the laws i'll just put that scripture 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. So this scripture says this. For whosoever keeps the law as a whole, but stumbles and offends in one single instance, has become guilty of breaking all of it. What this means is, okay, in the next verse it says, okay, for he who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not kill. If you do not commit adultery, but do kill, you have become guilty of transgressing the whole law. That means the example is 10 commandments. There are more than 10 commandments in the law. There are 613 commandments, okay? But let's say, let's take the example of the 10 commandments to make it easier for you. So he's giving an example saying, you shall not commit adultery and you shall not kill, okay? So a person might have not committed adultery, but say a person has broken some other commandment, maybe not murder, but has disobeyed the parents. Has he broken everything? Yes, according to the scripture. Even if you break one law, it is as good as you breaking all the laws. So in reality, you might have just disobeyed your parents or you might have, you know, broken any one of the commandments, but it is as good as you have committed adultery, you have committed murder. I'm not saying, the scripture is saying. Praise God. And that's why the law was introduced to show God's standard, okay? Because many a times what happens, the problem with the elder son was he was comparing. He was comparing himself. He was feeling that I worked so hard. I did this. I did that. But the younger son, you know, is getting everything free. That is his wrong understanding because none of us can ever justify ourselves by our works. The moment you and I are saying that because I did this, I, I deserve to go to heaven. You know what? We, we are definitely going to hell because yeah. we are under a curse. Why? Because we are saying Jesus, when God gave Jesus as a sacrifice, I'm saying, no, I need to perform. And because of my performance, because of my obedience, I'm going to heaven. And that's a wrong understanding. Yes, after you get saved, that doesn't mean you take grace as a license to sin. That faith that you have in Jesus has to have a corresponding action. And that corresponding action is the action of obedience. That is different. That faith also demands action. I'm not saying that. But the understanding, the heart condition that you have when you're doing the action is very important. Because a person who's on performance and a person who's on grace, both the action will be right. But the root from which it is coming is very, very wrong. And if you're on performance mindset, there are two things that are going to happen. The moment you fall, you're going to get into condemnation. The devil is going to condemn you. You didn't keep the commandment today. Look what you did. You are preaching. I used to get that voice in the past. You're preaching. Look what you did. What you did in the night. Look what you did in the morning. Look what you did yesterday. Look what you did day before yesterday. And you're preaching. What is he trying to do? He's trying to attack my identity by showing me my wrong action. But the day I realized righteousness, the, I, I got an understanding of righteousness. I realized that I'm not righteous because of my works. I'm not righteous because of my obedience. I'm righteous because of what Jesus did for me on the cross. And that's why it doesn't matter. My actions don't matter. Now, because I'm righteous, because I believe I am made the righteousness in Christ Jesus, because of that now, because of the grace, I am performing, but it is not my strength, it is his strength. Praise God. Yes, that's true. By the strength of God only, we can... 
we can like obey the law and try to be righteous no, no. with yes see we we don't have to we cannot keep the law okay the law was not many people think okay the law was introduced so that we can keep it but the truth is we cannot keep the law and now if just because we are born again sister does it mean that we are living a perfect life are we still falling every day yes. on yeah. a start yes, yes we fall we fall no we yes. outside it might show we might show okay everything is good but at least one negative thought in our thoughts we we sin right we yes. make mistakes and jesus was very clear he when he said adultery he said you need not go and commit the action the moment you saw a woman with lust you committed adultery in your spirit right so that thinking was more important than the action because the action is the result of the thinking when that's why my right action will never change my wrong thinking but my right thinking will definitely change my wrong action and that's why sister the more you understand on this topic of righteousness no you will get more and more answers so are you getting the answers sister is yeah. what is thinking to you okay i'm glad i'm glad you asked this question because like you only there might be so many people having this mindset and even i used to think okay this was you know like this like you know the younger older son was not given anything until i understood you know with the help of the holy spirit so let's go to that scripture i think it is 10 yeah thank you jesus yeah so now he is saying look these many years i served you i never disobeyed your command yet you never gave me so much as a little kid that i might reveal and fast sorry feast and be happy and make merry with my friends but when this son of yours arrived who has devoured your estate with immoral women you have killed for him that wheat fattened calf you know when i read this it reminds me of uh, an example a very practical example okay so like i have a younger brother okay and uh, like like my mother she had different uh, standards for both of us okay so sometimes i used to tell her see this is not fair okay for me you put told me i have to do this and this and this but for him you are you know you're being very partial so my attitude was just like this elder son you know telling his uh, father like you know i did this i did this but you never gave me anything but this son of yours who did this who wasted his time who did, did not do what i did so i was comparing okay i did not know what i was doing was wrong we do that right those of you who have siblings would relate to what i'm saying because i have done it okay not understanding that my mother she had compassion for my brother that you know he's not performing like this so she's giving him grace now instead of being happy that she's giving him grace i who am in performance i who am in law i want her to bring him also in the law that is what happens with a person who is in performance because i am performing but i am struggling but this person didn't perform but got everything easy so instead of me going and enjoying and learn you know me also taking things easy i want that person also to get into the bondage of law does it happen yes yes sir. yes right that's exactly what this person is saying i did so much but this son of yours he wasted he wasted everything he went and he uh, was uh, you know gallivanting with those prostitutes and this is what you do you killed for him that wheat fattened calf that's what the pharisees were they, that was their attitude we are working so hard 
we are struggling so hard and this sinners and everyone you are just you know accepting them j- just like that how can you do that jesus that was their attitude but that's what jesus was trying to show us the father's love that the father knows that you and i can never make it to heaven based on our works it is only by believing in the blood of jesus by our faith that we can we are saved right and because of that okay the father wanted the elder son also to come and enjoy the food enjoy the fat and calf he wanted him to also believe in the sacrifice of his son but a person who is in performance mindset many a times it is very difficult unless the holy spirit convicts them to you know make that correction i would say this was a very big struggle for me maybe not you know keeping the law and all those things the religion i'm speaking about like keeping the commandments and all but when i say performance mindset my dependency on my own strength because for 22 years of my life i was a perfectionist i want everything on the way i you know planned it and if it didn't go the way i planned it like out of 10 things there would be eight things which should go right but there would be one or two things which would not go right and that would flare me up that was enough to spoil my entire day so you can see from what you know which background i'm coming but only after you know spending time in the word these three years that i have been in the word holy spirit has been helping me to overcome this performance mindset thank you jesus praise god and that's when the father said to the elder son son you are always with me and all that is mine is yours but it was fitting to make merry to revel and feast and rejoice for this brother of yours was dead and is alive again he was lost and is found that's exactly what god wants us to do he doesn't want us to work hard he wants us to believe in the sacrifice of jesus in the blood of jesus and because now we have believed in the blood of jesus we know what jesus has done for us our life can never be the same again praise god praise god would anyone like to ask anything or add anything on this what we are studying so you now we all understood why the uh, elder son was wrong because of his heart condition his wrong thinking he was a son but he considered himself a servant that's what god wants us to understand he calls us we are the children of god we are the adopted children of god because of the blood of jesus and we have to live a life of freedom a life of grace not a life of performance not a life based on bondage right that's exactly what god is convicting us holy spirit is convicting you and me of thank you holy spirit praise god thank you jesus praise god yes sister marcela you want to say something yeah you know what has happened i said i want this to you interrupt you in your teaching but what came to my mind is you know uh, when when we go to first 26 27 the uh, the servant uh, the the elder son asks the servant what's happening no so 27 the servant tells him that your brother has come home actually that was just enough for him to say your brother has come home and father's uh, it, uh, like the father is happy but you know when he said when the, actually this word triggered the elder son when he said the servant said that your father has killed the patent calf you know that that triggered him that made him so angry oh that's why he said you not even a kid you were given me so, you know it i'm telling you through an experience now the other day there were we had we have two masses occasionally we, we have two masses it's only when they have the months mind but every day is a quarter to six quarter to seven mass and we have many cars at uh, alongside like you know adjacent to my car many cars are there now on a month's mind 
only my cow was there I, because uh, the other cows were there and I got a parking. Now, when before mass would begin, the month my a lady walks right to the choir and uh, makes an announce, announcement about a car number so and so is blocking the other car. So I know it might, I just went out with my umbrella, I didn't say anything. And I saw that there were no other cars there. This one, my car looked, it looked like it's blocking the, the no oncoming. So I didn't say anything. I took the car and went and kept it further. When, and I came back. Now, this lady understood this my car and she knows very well my car. I don't know, maybe she forgot it. Then what happened? It triggered me that, how can she say that to me? What is wrong with her? You know, I, I'm in connection with this. So I just said, Holy Spirit, help me. Because I don't want to have any argument, no explain nothing. I just want to take control of my emotion. I don't want the emotion to take control of me. I'm always observing this, that I should never allow the emotion to control me. So then I'm, after mass got over, I was, I was hollering a lady. And this lady now who said about my car, she comes and she wants to give me explanation now. Oh, I did. I heard only one sentence. Oh, I did not know your car. I would have come and told you about it personally. I just said, no, 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 nothing. I don't do anything. Please, please, please. Nothing is over. Forget it, I said. You know, and you know what comes in my mind? Anybody doing anything, I observe the evil wants a body and then the evil tries to attack me. So I just said, no, no, she still wants... Listen, listen. I said, no, please. And I moved off. I just moved off, went to the other little crowd because we were sna having snacks. And I was comfortable. And in the mind, I'm still saying, thank you, Jesus, because I've overcome my emotion and I've finished the matter therein. So this is exactly what happens. It, we get triggered when somebody comes and tells us. And then the, the servant told the elder son that a calf is killed. So that annoyed him more. It is not that his brothers come. He didn't even think of his brother coming home, or, but he got triggered of the very fact that a big calf, calf is killed for the son, for the brother. When that it came to my mind, a word can trigger us. A small so. Yes, yes sister, I agree what you said. But you know why it triggered him? Because he did not understand the father's yes, love. Sir, he didn't understand that father's love. That I understood. Your, but I just want to emphasize on a word can trigger us. Something. Somebody says, yeah. so there we are so careful. Uh, God loves us so much. Let anybody say anything. As long as we have a relation, we know who we, we know identity. That's exactly what I want to say. That, you know, we can overcome our emotion, overcome anything that comes against us. Praise God. And of course, by your teaching, we have learned a lot. Thank you so much. God bless you. All glory to God, sister. It's the Holy Spirit who is leading all of us. And by the way, and by the way, thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you, Jesus. So what you said was true. That even one also, you know, the word can get a person into offense, into offense, into offense. Like one small thing, right? Can get like one word, as you said. That is what devil is waiting. We are in the father's, we are experiencing the love of the father. Correct? Correct. So, yeah. But in that love walk, in between, he throws through people small words that can trigger us, get us into offense, as you rightly said, so that we do not experience the Father's love and we are cut off from grace. True. So every moment we have to rejoice. We have to renew our mind with the word of God, with the Father's love. That's the only cure to this to self-righteousness, to performance mindset and all of this. And I would say it is a process. It is a process that begins the moment we get born again. And it is an ongoing process. Like it, it started in my life three years back. And it is every day on this topic. There are so many things that I'm learning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Praise Jesus. God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. So it was a beautiful understanding of the two sons. Yes, Sister Cressy, you can share. Sister, just one thing. Actually, what irritates the elder son more than anything is that the younger son gets more attention than the elder son. The attention is what that triggers all the emotions in him and makes him bitter. Now, I have only one question. Uh, you said that the estate was divided equally between the younger son and the elder son. Yes. And the younger son 
has finished all his estate, his property. He has he has finished his inheritance. Now, will he come asking for more inheritance after being after being found? Will he now? Will the estate that is now the father has given everything to the elder son and to the younger son? Now, will he divide the property once again between the elder son and the younger son, removing the his the elder son's share and giving it to the younger son? uh sister honestly see i don't know that answer because it's not in the word if it's not in the word i cannot give you that answer but the understanding is what like in this parable who is the father it is god correct correct sister yes, yes. and the elder son stands for a person on performance mindset a younger son stands for a person who's experiencing grace now god wants everyone to experience grace so like it doesn't matter no what happened what was the idea of jesus telling the parable the jesus telling the parable was all of you all can freely receive the grace through faith that is what is more important no praise god praise god thank you jesus so it really doesn't matter sister whether what happened because we don't even know what happened after that whether the elder son came back whether he you know came even though he was in the father's house he was still spiritually blinded because he didn't understand the love of his father because he would if he would have really understood the love of his father he would have never ever gotten irritated because that's what i gave you my personal example no like i was comparing myself with my younger brother i also got irritated i'm like thinking okay my mother is favoring him that's what i used to think but when i came in the word holy spirit made me understand it is not true your mother loves both of you equally okay and she knows that your brother cannot perform that way so she's showing him grace and if you understand that just because she is showing him grace but her love for you doesn't change it is no favorite god doesn't have any favorite in the same way this father also did not have pay any favorite he loved both his children equally you will never ever get insecure praise god praise god thank you jesus thank you sister for asking these questions because i'm sure it's going to help many people praise god okay so shall we end today's session and continue tomorrow praise god would anyone like to make the thanksgiving prayer I'll make. Yes, sister, go ahead. In the name of the Father and Son, Holy Spirit. Thank you, our Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, Lord God, I thank and praise you for this beautiful teaching you have blessed us with. Thank you, Lord God. You called each one of us. It is you who called us. Thank you, Lord Holy Spirit, for teaching us, helping us through examples. Help. Thanking. Uh, thank you, Holy Spirit, Lord, for making it so clear, so easy to understand. the truth that you and with this truth you set many of us free especially that uh, the, the one who comes the stranger that comes to tempt us in our thoughts but thank you lord god every moment every day uh, you are reminding us to renew our mind and every time we think of your love lord jesus all that you have done for us on the cross everything is finished for us on the cross and thank you for the grace that we have grace is sufficient for us to walk to our journey in life and i thank you lord that you've given us this hunger and thirst for your word for all the beautiful participants that come every day to listen to have this breakfast so that we are strengthened in our spirit as well as in our body and the whole day we can go forward as we are blessed to be a blessing to the nations to every person that we come across thank you lord god once again for loving us so much unconditionally even when we make mistakes or blunders i could say lord 
you, you washed us clean in the precious blood of your son, Jesus. We do not remember our sins of our past, the present, and even of the future. Lord God, I thank you for your unconditional love and mercy that surrounds us every day. And I thank you for the anointed preacher, Dr. Priya, that blesses us with the same anointing that, we have, that she has received, imparting to us the same anointing every moment, every day. Thank and praise you, Lord. We are your children, and we will be your sons and daughters as the Spirit leads us. We make this prayer, our Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, sister, for this beautiful prayer. Thank you all for joining in. See you all tomorrow. Bye. Bye, Bye everybody. God bless.